Hi, this is Loopline, and in this video I want to cover footprints. Now, a lot of people get confused about footprints, so I'm going to try to start from the very beginning about what a footprint is. So this is going to be very basic at first, and then I'll go a little bit more advanced. A footprint is basically just uh, a string of text that is common to most or all of the pages that you're looking for. So if I wanted to find pages about the word car, I would type car here in the keyword box, in the scrape box, um, and that I would get car. Now technically that can sort of be considered a footprint, but um, it, we would call it a keyword. A footprint would be more like if I wanted to find pages that had the word car on them and that also had the word yellow on them, then I would do something like this where I put the word yellow in there as well. And then if I also wanted to have it about Chevy, that would be more like a footprint because it's combining multiple elements. So footprints up here, you'll see this custom footprint button, and that would be using whatever you type in, and then there's a platforms button there, and then you can choose platforms, and it'll auto append different footprints to it. And this top box will append any footprint that you put in there. So I could put yellow and Chevy up here, and it will automatically attach this to this and make it into one long footprint. And then if I were to choose, say, this uh, plus site builder, it would also attach that. But let's start a little bit more simpler than that and just look at a footprint. So say we take the platforms here and we do plus site builder and we just put the word car in there. And I'm just going to start harvesting and then I'm just going to stop it. Now what's interesting is you'll see as it goes through here, this is the single threaded harvester. You can actually see the keyword that's used. So we only put in the word car and ticked off plus site builder, but you can see the plus signs are spaces and so what Scrapebox actually sent to Google there is please type the confirmation code you see on the image and add new message and guestbook and car because those words please type the confirmation code that you see on the image add new message and guestbook are all common to the plus site builder so I went ahead and opened up a few of these plus site builder pages so we can see them and see what we're talking about so this says, this was part of the footprint, please type the confirmation code you see on the image. So that's nice because you probably wouldn't see that on every form out there. Whereas you would probably have the word name or possibly even add a message on every word out there. So if I was going to build a footprint for any page, let's say for Plus Site Builder, I would first find a page on the site that I wanted. In this case, I want to be able to add new uh, guestbook comments. So I look at the comment form because if a page doesn't have the comment form on it then it's not going to work for our purposes. So that's the kind of footprint I want to build is a footprint based around the elements of the page that is needed for us to get the page that we want. And in this case a page that will allow us to submit comments and it's going to have the form on it. So we look for text on the page. That's the first way to do it. So you would add new message, name, email, URL, and message. Those are all going to be real common towards lots of platforms. So if I put those in there, I might get everything from WordPress to movable type to guest books to image, um, comment, platforms, the whole nine yards. I want something that gives me just this platform. This please type the confirmation code you see in the image, that is a little bit more unique. Also, the word guestbook, because all of them are going to have the word guestbook on the page in the code somewhere. Here's the guestbook right here. The word guestbook is something that's going to narrow it down to just guestbooks. And then we also saw in the uh, footprint back here um, another thing there, which is add new message, which is right here. So when we combine add new message plus please type the confirmation code you see on the image plus the word guestbook, and add it to our word, our keywords there, we're generally going to get that just pages or the majority of pages come back from Google as being this particular platform. So if we look at, here's another one, same thing. You see all the same text. Here's another one. Here's another one. You can see they all have the add new message, name, email, URL, message, please type the confirmation code, um, and the word guestbook. So Basically what you got to do is you got to look at multiple pages. So you can't really build a footprint very accurately off of only one page because you need to have elements that are common across most or all of the pages from that platform. So the first thing you have to identify is find pages. So what how I usually start out with is if I was going to look for the Plesk image builder um, 
platform there. I would go to their to the content management systems website uh, and read up about it. A lot of times I'll have examples and I would open up several of those example pages uh, and then I would start searching Google for different things um, based on what I saw there and try to find several pages like this that had um, elements on them that were all similar. So now I can say, well, okay, add new message and then this one and guest book is on all of them. And so I go through them all and it's on all of them. So that's what I'm going to make my footprint out of. So, you know, it basically would look like this um, if we wanted to copy this off here. Add new message. Let's do it in the order scrape box, had it, because that probably make it simpler. I'm going to put this in here and I'm going to put that in quotes. And then I'm going to put add new message in quotes. And then guest book. And then my word car. And you can see it comes up with all kinds of different things. And you can see the word guest book in here. We can probably just open some random ones. We're most likely to see our nice form down there at the bottom. And so some of these obviously don't look like they're loading. Um, see, there's one, and maybe those two will load, we'll see. But while, while they're waiting for those to load, another great thing is to notice, always look at your footprint in Google, because if you just load stuff into Scrapebox, you may come up with random results, and then you're kind of disconnected, so you can't really tell what's going on. So I always test my footprints on the search engines themselves in a browser and then open it up and look for it. See here's another one that we didn't have already um, and it obviously has all of this as well. So you, you wouldn't know that and this one happens to be forbidden that the hosting has gone bad since Google last crawled it but you wouldn't know that if you didn't see it here in Google if you just loaded what you thought would work as a footprint into Scrapebox and then hit go you're just going to see a list of URLs. Now you can open each one of those in a browser if you want and that's fine but it'd be just a lot easier just to load it in Google. And then if you start opening up a bunch of pages and find that none of them are really giving you what you want, then you have to refine your footprint. So it's very important to work with your footprint inside of the search engine itself before you try to work with it in Scrapebox. Now, another thing that you can do is you can pull elements out of the source code because that's what the search engines really crawl anyways. They don't actually go crawl they don't render the page like this and view the text. They actually will view just the um, source code. So if we open one of these back up here, and I'm going to hit Control U, and that on um, um, Firefox I'm using here, that brings up this, and it works on Chrome too, I think, and most browsers. But uh, you can also find it up, you know, in the menu to open up the HTML source code. If you're familiar with HTML, this will be easy for you. Um, if you're not familiar with this, it could be a little little tricky for you. You might have to do a little bit of research, but HTML is fairly simple. Um, you know, I learned it when I was a teenager and was building web pages in Notepad, so I have every confidence that all of you can do it as well. So you can view different things. Now, it's important to note that the search engines aren't going to allow you to put HTML tags, which would be like this, this table data, table row, form, those sorts of things. You can't put that into the search engine. They're only going to return text. But if I wanted to do, let's say, um, the word guestbook, I can hit the find here and come up with, here it is, it found the word guestbook for me. And we can see this is in the middle of the title of the page. This is actual text. So I could use all of this as my text if I wanted to. Or I can go down farther um, and look at the actual Here's the word guestbook as part of a link. This is probably the one near the bottom of the page or somewhere else. Um, or I can put powered by stuff. So for instance, if I had, uh, let me jump over here to, this happens to be one of my sites. Um, if we look at the source of this, and uh, this is a WordPress site, so I'm going to do powered by WordPress. Then I can find that this page contains this part of it's a link and this is the title of the link but then the tag closes out and we can see actual text so Google would see this and you could use this as part of a footprint powered by WordPress so I could copy that and then go out of here go back to Google and do proudly powered by WordPress um, and then let's say I also want to do 
I want to be able to do comments. So I'm just going to take a guess and put the word comment on there. Maybe put the word name because we usually see that. Um, and then let's put the word car as well. And pull up some pages. So let's have a, a quick look here at those things. And while those are loading, we can see I have multiple pages here that are WordPress blogs. And you'll see powered by WordPress, powered by WordPress, that sort of thing. So the point is that um, this proudly powered by WordPress, unless you remove it, shows up on all WordPress blogs by default. So we're going to work with that and take into account that that's probably there. So let's go back and look at some of these things. So here we have the option to skip down to leave a comment. And we can see proudly powered by WordPress. All I did was type in, remember, I typed in the word comment and the word name. Because most forms have those on them. And I'm looking for pages I can comment on. So here we go. This actually says leave a reply. But it has the name, email, website. And so let's look at the next one. Let's go see if there's a form here at the bottom. This is post a new comment. And then the next one is comment form. So you can see those vary, but you can see that most of them have the word name, email. This has the word comment or comments. And you can also use partial words. So I would use the word comment and leave off the S because it's there. Um, and then maybe do powered by WordPress. And then we can see another one, this one, if you click add a comment, it takes us over to the comment form itself. So, and you have to be signed in, that sort of thing. So that was just a quick little thing we put together. And so what I would do now is I've got some pages that have the WordPress forms on them. Now I would construct something that said, okay, so I want to be able to include leave a reply. The comment is there. The word comment is here. The word comment was there. So now I'd probably do word, powered by WordPress. I, and you want to be make it as minimal as possible because the more you put in, the more likely, the more narrow field of results it would have. So I don't really need the word proudly because it doesn't do anything for me. Powered by WordPress, the word comment, name, and I can either do the word comment or leave a reply and then put the word name in there. And now I've got 85 million results. And so that would narrow it down and I would get even more because now I have the word leave a reply in there. And you can use different operators. It obviously is important if you're going to do footprints that you understand operators. So of each and each engine is a little different. Obviously most people are going to start with Google. So you can just do Google search operators. And this Google guide website is great. Um, there's lots more there too, but they have a nice, and this is old, but they have a nice list of um, your operators here and how they work and you click on them. It'll tell you how each one works and its limitations and that sort of thing. Um, and a couple things have, uh, I'm not sure if they've updated this. A few things have been expired somewhat recently in Google, uh, but the majority of this is still here. Like the link doesn't work anymore uh, and that sort of thing. But um, you need to understand the different advanced operators and then how you can do basic things like uh, or and the pipe key and that sort of stuff. You need to understand how Google works if you're going to be able to use it uh, accurately. Because if I wanted to be a little bit more specific, I could do stuff like um, powered by WordPress. And then let's say I was looking for um, specific in URL car. And then uh, so let's say, or I, or I can be in URL Chevy. And then let's say I also wanted green. I don't even know if that'll return the results, and it does. And you can see that here, it, it, the word green and car are in the, the URL. So there's lots of things you can do with footprints, and it really boils down to what you want to do. I have another video on footprints. I'll link it in the description of this video. Um, but you can do all kinds of different things where you use those advanced operators and you used regular operators and just text either from the source code or from the web page itself. And you can build a footprint for whatever you want, whether it's a platform you're looking for, say you have um, a particular form that you want, you know, say you have a group of sites about your particular niche on, you know, on widgets. The, the field and the scope is endless once you understand basically how to do a footprint. And all a footprint is is a group of text off of 
a page that most or all of the pages you're looking for have that group of text. And then you can turn around and do uh, advanced operators in there as well. So you can tie in things like in titles, in anchors, in URLs, and you can incorporate that as part of your footprint as well. And don't forget that Scrapebox has, when you do certain harvests, uh, it shows you right here, like this is a single threaded harvester, um, and you get to single threaded harvester if you want to experiment by unticking use multi-threaded harvester and use custom harvester. And when you untick those two, you wind up with the single threaded harvester. Also remember, work with your footprints in the search engine itself in a browser and now I have my footprint now I can go over here and paste it in here and harvest and get the same set of results that I would get in Google itself whereas if I just go ahead and fire away in here who knows what I might be getting um, and you can see it's got those words in there and everything uh, and this is the same that I get right here so you need to make sure that you know what you're getting and you can see it beforehand um, you need to understand a little bit of HTML if you're going to do HTML um, footprints based off of that. Remember, you can't do actual operators, only the text that would show up on the page. And, and that's important because on a lot of pages, um, they will visually in a browser, they will hide certain text for whatever reason. Maybe it's a list of text, a list of uh, comments or trackbacks or um, whatever else. It just won't be visually available in most browsers because of whatever JavaScript they're using or whatever script they're using you can't see it but it's still there and Google can still see it and it could be a useful part of a footprint to use so that's an important element to keep in mind and the last tip to remember again is keeping things as narrow as possible or as broad as possible rather and that means use a minimum effective dose so you want to use enough unique elements on a page to make a footprint give you back only what you're after but you don't want to use so many that you rule out certain things because remember in our WordPress example if I were only to use the word comment and name for instance and then I put the word email and website and then I turned around and I went over here and put your name and your email then um, it's gonna be a little bit more limiting so let's say I take a footprint here that says your name it's powered by WordPress and it has your name and then it also has your email and it has that comment form that we saw right up here at the top and it says that because this has been customized if I only look at this one page uh, and kick it out there's 147,000 results but if I take out the word comment form and just do comment and I take it back down to just say email and name and don't put the word your in there and do it now I've got 50 million results so 147,000 to 50 million results that's what minimum effective dose is this gets me the words that I need without adding extra words that I don't need and then I can turn around and put in comment or le or reply because that's another buzzword there um, and now we got 53 million so I just upped it by 3 million results by putting in the word reply because remember this form had the word reply it didn't say the word comment here so minimum effective dose while still giving you the footprint that you need and that is how you create a footprint to use to scrape with from a search engine with a browser and how you create a footprint to scrape with in Scrapebox.